All right, guys, welcome back. Let's get into the build. Um, working up towards Christmas, you may notice a few uh, gingerbread men, etc., laying around the place. We do a bit of yard art at home, get a bit carried away at times, but back to the camel. Watch along, we'll see what we get up to. Right, got some plywood. Going to continue on with building a frame to get these panels on. I'm um, just playing around. This is the system I'm going to use, sort of L angle, which is 40 by 20, um, and a Dell clamp without the rubber. The reason being, the covering needs to go over this. So I don't want a dirty, great big bulge poking out, and also the plywood will sit over the top. Um, I need to devise a way that these Adele clamps stay in place with the L angle off so that I can cover it. Um, the way I've got those mounted is with the, the tang at the back. And the plywood, the plywood will now sit on this edge. I'll cut a piece today to go around the, the seat, the seat base here. Um, both sides, that'll be front and rear, working on the bottom. So I've cut out some sandpaper because it's, because it's black. Um, I can either do tabs. This is to, to connect the, the side panel to the floor or to the bottom of the fuselage. Um, I don't want to drill into my tube. I can collect these floor screws here, I guess. Hindsight, those tangs are a bit too thin on the floor and it's all glued down. So I don't know, potentially I could have put those under the floor hindsight's a powerful thing so I can either do sort of two inch ones um, I think I'll do the one big strip like up the front there like a sill on a car fill the whole gap or on the other side I've got like paddle pop stick types ones it'll get a bit too busy whereas if I just fill the like with a piece like this fill the whole gap I think that's the way well I've decided that's the way I'm going to do it that's why I'm going to do it, so that's all that's important, I guess. Um, we'll get those cut out today. I think I will try and get the plywood click out into place. Sort of losing sleep a bit over how... I don't know how the turtle deck... Um, I think I might go back to sheeting this with aluminium, because it's thinner. If that was sheeted with aluminium, then I'm not sure. I want all this wood to be to look like wood at least, or be wood. Um, from what I've seen on videos, yeah, it's got an aluminium aluminium sheet on there. This plywood comes up and just basically tacks on. So if it's quarter inch thick, you'll have a quarter inch step just poking out in the breeze. That's fine because it's a World War One aeroplane. Then he has, he supplied a bit of alloy sheet that goes from sort of nothing around to the rear cabane. Um, and then you do the, you know, the, the egg shape or the potato shape for my head. So, and that must just overlap. I've got no attachment at the top at this stage. So I probably have to go with something along these lines, along the top as well. Bear in mind, you're gonna see all this and potentially bump your, your shoulder on it and things like that. So it'll be, you know, I'll do that nice and neat. Um, or do I run a bit of plywood from here, which is square, or, you know, straight edges, back into a curve and try and, try and do a nice, you know, if I did it out of aluminium and then try and sheet it in, say, two mil plywood, um, Anyway, that's the challenge I've got ahead. I really want the, I want wood here. I want wood combing around the cockpit. I want wood side panels, which I've got, and then aluminium up the front. I can see now why all of, or most of Robert Basley's aircraft that he does, and a couple of other people that I've seen, they basically cover from the fin post all the way up over these panels, like cover it all the way up to the firewall and spray it all green basically. That's probably the easy way to do it. You can imagine you could use 
you know, aluminium, wood, do whatever you have to do. You could even use bog and filler um, to make it all smooth and all the joints nice and then just bag it all up and cover it um, and just have aluminium sheet at the front and the hump. But that's not what the colour scheme that I want. What I'm trying to achieve is one in New Zealand. I call it BO1, but it's B1. Um, you know, this is what I'm trying to sort of go for. Um, or this one here is at a museum in Shuttleworth or somewhere, I think, in the UK. So wood and wood. Um, just because it looks nice. So we'll just tackle one piece at a time and see where we end up. This is where you have to become your own sort of design engineer. Um, how many Adele clamps? So, you know, is four better than three or is two enough? Um, I think what I'll do and what I've learnt when I pull these off to paint them, this is only a scrap piece, but bear with me. Um, that's going to run full length from there through the, through this somehow down to the seat bracket, seat belt bracket. Um, so possibly just one at the bottom. If I did one there and one at the top, that also helps me in the fact that they're not they're not each end and directly in the centre. It'll be off centre. So this then becomes. Um, it's not ambidextrous, it just fits in one spot. Because once it's painted, like I said before, you've got, you know, one, two on the other side. There's three, there's probably four possibilities that can go back on. Um, and you spend all day trying to work out how it went. All right, so I've got the um, L angle, if you like, bolted on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just keep keep the metal where the bolts are and I'll scallop all this out um, just to sort of hide it. That's bolted on, giving me a frame at the rear post and the front. I'm going to cut some plywood now, Clico it on, and then we'll work out how we're going to do the bottom and whether or not I need this, uh, this side kidney panel here. Made my template. Got a nice piece of three mil ply here. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'll cut this out and click it on. If it works, it works. All right, guys. So I've had that on. 100 mil spacing. I had it click it on. I just goobered up the um, this jobby here, uh, the rear cabane. Um, I just had zero gap and half inch gap at the front here. So I've run my lines and what I'm going to do now, just before I go home, is repair the bit of wood. So I made the hole bigger than it needs, cut a patch and the patch it's going to go in there, I'll sand that off, um, fits a bit better than that. Sand that off once it's stained, not too many people will know. And it gives me another chance just to cut this out, um, do it nice and neat. Now that the panel's working, had too many sections all going at once. Um, and not only that, when you, when you offer it up, you know, you, you're four inches away and you're trying to predict where it's going to lay down, if that makes sense. So, sneaking up on it, I reckon I've had this panel on and off 10 times today. We've got it right in the end, apart from the rear cabane. Um, so I've run the lines, so tomorrow I'll be able to just cut this out once the, once, yeah, be able to cut this out once the glue dries. Bit of glad wrap on the bench, bit of white glue, we'll snot it up, good to go. All glued up. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> Poor man's laser cutter.
All right, side skin's cliqued on. Did my patchwork up here, so that's all nice and neat now. Um, I dropped the cable, they can go back on now. Just got to neaten up the dashboard so that the angle's right there. I'm just looking at the curves and make sure there's no oil canning or indentations, I guess, but it's, um, yeah, she's got nice curves on her. So it's flat at the back, three inch hump at the front. I'm not a hump, but a curve, um, looking pretty good, structurally sound. Now I just need to work out along the bottom here, um, how I'm going to secure that in and to the floor just up the front there so once again we get back to those brackets i think i'll just run a run a bracket and bolt it on they won't be easy to put on these panels but um i'll get them on all right so on the side there i've just given the um had some windex in the cupboard given the plywood a spray with windex i used to do that on the model airplanes but we'll see what happens uh, probably won't do much but might just when it dries out help the um the ply sit there it's pretty happy anyway but i might continue to wet it while it's on there it can't hurt it'd be nice when i pulled it off it kept its shape if not doesn't matter I'm not sure about this piece in here um whether i bite the bullet and probably i'll probably bite the bullet and cut another piece i'm not too sure um anyway I could put a bit of fiberglass on the inside. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got both sides on. Really happy with that. Looking good. Gave it a spray. Something to dry out already. Um, so, <clears throat> in an effort just to not get overwhelmed, I'm taking the firewall off. I can get in here. Now let's fix the bottom. So you've got to become your own design engineer. It's not much, not a kit builder, it's more of a aeronautical engineer. So the floor will be in like that. And I've just measured this up, two ruler widths, so two inches plus 10 mil. Um, gives me whatever, doesn't really matter, but it's easy to measure up. So that'll, this will be a full length strip. And I'm just checking, you know, obviously I, I think, well I know, the front angle is going to be less than the back. It's almost 90 at the back and sort of flattens out at the front. So what size sheet? Don't know, it's just gonna hold some nuts, um, nuts and bolts along there. And I think, so I don't wanna go into my tube, I think I just put self tappers. But do I put the self tappers over the tube or do I try and miss the tube? In the event the self tappers pull out, I can replace it with a bolt. That's where I'm thinking at the moment. So there like that I think I think that'll miss the tube it's probably worthwhile missing the tube put some self tappers in like I said if it, they rip out or strip I could put a bolt through nut and bolt little one three mil or something so while we're in there there's that inner bit that I sort of engineered that'll pull in at the Top's not, the top's not home and hose yet, it's not tucked in. Um, they turned out perfect. So I just need to make up some more of these. I'll do it in situ. So push it against the outer bit, which is the important bit, and then just back drill into the kidney, little kidney panels. Um, stain those up, paint them. Now down the back there, um, you can see my L angles, looks very hardware storage. So I'm gonna give those a good going over with the sander, paint them black, and they'll camouflage into the airframe. We're looking good. Just squaring up my lines. This, um, this square's got a little notch out of it. But believe it or not, this square was my dad's. Now he died in 1998. So, I've had that quite a long time. It's rough and ready, but yeah, that's why I use this one. And every time I use it, it just sort of reminds me because it's, it's crappy really, but it's got a little nick in it and you get that effect. But it was my dad's. All right, back at it today. <clears throat> in here nice and early. 
got these panels on. I sprayed them down with water last night. Um, so get that tape off. Should be good to go. Um, really happy with how these have turned out. I um, didn't know where to go just at the start there. <coughs> but turned out well. I taped all along the bottom there, got those brackets installed on the inside. If I um, come around here, turn a few lights on. I've got the towel and that down there. I've dropped a screw, a spanner and stuff like that down there quite a few times now. Um, and as you can see, it saved me here where I had a bit of a blemish. So, got those panels in. Look good, they'll get painted up black. Um, self tappers into the wood. It's only 7mm um, red oak, that is, or ply, 7mm ply. So I made sure the screws, I got a washer under the head just to make sure they didn't penetrate the other side of the wood and go into the chromoly fuselage or try to. Um, make a little bracket today for down the back. I'll use a similar system to at the back wall. I'm going to, I think I've discussed it before, I'm going to sacrifice all the material apart from where the bolts are. Get rid of that. Um, and just leave it on there for now. So for those who aren't aware, whoops, flying was, this is the final finish. You'll see this is what I'm trying to say. So we get a stain and a clear coat um, in that cedar color. So same as the floorboard, that's the plan. I'm still not 100% sure how all the overlaps and everything work. So the paper represents either ply or aluminium um, that will tuck under here. But then also this combing which goes up to the dash. So wood there, wood there, a potato shape cut out. So there's sort of four sections. Would I do it all in one and then cut out the big hole and it goes from square or straight edges to round. Um, and I've got a one inch overhang the plans or the, the, the build notes actually said that you can see on that side if I pull that in so maybe just the Dell clamps here but that's going to be in my line of sight when I'm in the cockpit as well so yeah still working on it um, another consideration I've got is when I cover the fuselage this will be fabric come up wrap around I need to keep these Adele clamps in that exact location um, while I take off the bracket so that I can cover it. Or potentially I just cover around those brackets. Maybe I'll do that. Just cover up over the, over the L angle. I'm not sure. But there you go, we're looking good. In the cockpit, flight controls. I'll be careful not to lean on this tube. And so today, today I'm going to give the cruiser a bit of love first up. It's due for an annual inspection. Because you build the aircraft yourself and I'm the only one who flies it, you sort of get to know where it's at. So basically anything that moves needs an oil. I'm looking for cracks and loose rivets. So I'm just going to break it up today. I'm just going to do from the undercarriage back. So the fuselage, the windows, aerial, Empennage. I know I've got to tighten up the rudder cables. Um, they've just come loose, just stretched a bit, so they just need a tweak. I'll probably just, because it's the rudder, and I always need right rudder, I'll just tighten this one up, which will give me a little bit of right trim, um, and it'll naturally tighten up the other side as well. I'll go over everything, make sure the bolts aren't spinning or loose. Um, looking for cracks, lubricate the elevator and the rudder. Just use WD-40 or a little little uh, oink oink oil can. Um, <clears throat> open up the panel underneath the hell hole. So I'll take this panel off under here. Jump up in there, have a look, and that'll do for today. Because I want to get back and do a couple of brackets on the on the camel. So I find if I break it up into sections, um, then theoretically I could go for a fly. People are probably screaming at the screen, so it's not airworthy until you get the annual done. But um, 
I just do it in bits. I've got three or four hours of oil left. What I mean by that is um, every 25 hours I change the oil. So I'm coming up to a 25 hour oil change and um, we'll drop that out. I like to, well, there's two tra trains of thought there, whether you drop the oil when it's cold, so all the, the sump's full and all the golden glitter is in the sump, or do you give it an engine run to warm up the oil, but then all the oil and the, the gold is up through the engine, the metal particles. <clears throat> um, either way, drop the oil. I also like, I don't see it happen too much around here, but it's the raff in me, I guess, to put the filters back on, replenish the oil, give it an engine run before the cows go on, check for leaks, we'll do a good leak check. Also, then you top the oil back up. Now the Jabiru, what I've found with the Jabiru, it sits happily, this will be within the, the two dots. It's got three dots, it'll be between the first and second dot, almost guaranteed. There you go, um, if you can see that. So that's where it sits, it always sits there. The temptation is to fill it up to the third dot, but all that happens is it, um, it spits the oil out into the overfill bottle, overflow bottle. <clears throat> so I naturally, um, and I found that with, I've had three engines now, three Jabiru engines. They find an equilibrium, if you like, where they like to sit. So once you sort of learn that, um, but it's hard when I replace the oil, obviously I fill it up because you're filling up the filter and the lines and the, all the orifices. Um, so you don't want to obviously run out of oil, but it just takes a couple of flights for the oil to um, settle back down. Also I get, I know after an oil change, I get oil pressure, just fluctuations, which is sometimes a bit of a concern, but now that I'm used to it and I expect it, it's not too bad. And then I guess breaking the annual inspection down, I'll come into the left wing, take off the panels, these ones here, just have a peek in there for fuel leaks, lubrication, wing strut attachments, take the spats off, check the brakes, tyres. I've got a slow leak on the nose wheel. Um, after about six weeks or so, it's down to about 12 PSI from 30. Uh, you just gotta keep an eye on that. I might change the valve on that. Um, fuel caps, check the fuel caps, check all the rivets. When I say fuel caps, the inward vent, blow through that. Both sides, pedo tube. Uh, inside, all the plumbing. I'll check the header tank, security of everything, pull the rubber boot off. I can have a look inside my turtle deck, or not the turtle deck, sorry, the, um, the armrest. Um, some people are putting, going crazy with anchor nuts and everything and access in there. There's only a torque tube and a Dell clamps. And you can see from the front when you lift up the rubber boot. And when I get up the back, you can see, see up the back. So you can check all that out. Uh, give it a good vacuum, rudder pedals, lubricate all that and just, just basically have a good look around, looking for cracks and loose rivets. Um, the wide aircraft, any loose rivets, they sort of give you that little, little lightning bolt. Um, the biggest part, I guess, is just pulling the panels, the spats, doing all that sort of stuff. When I put the panels back on, I also use a little, little bit of um, anti-seize, highly recommended. Get some anti-seize on there and yeah, you're good to go. A little bit more water, can't hurt before I go home. It's probably not doing absolutely anything, but just put a coat of water on there. I'll do the inside this time as well. Dry, baby, dry. All right, guys, so we've got a couple of those brackets there for down the back. Got those painted up. Uh, they'll go in along the bottom there. A lot of this could have been, you know, quicker had I put the tabs on there. But you buy a welded fuselage, I would have thought there'd be tabs everywhere. But anyway, I'm just making do. Um, I've wet the wood down. I don't know if that does anything. It probably needs to soak like in a swimming pool or 
it's fully submerged for a bit, get it really wet, but it's working anyway, so I'm just doing that as I walk past, just to, for whatever. I think I'll have a go at the three mil ply up over the top. Um, we'll end up with this happening here, which I've made allowances. I've got a three mil recess, if you like, in behind, but you'll still get the overlap. And then there's a third sheet. The combing is gonna come down by an inch overlap and all bolt, for instance, there will be three layers. Um, but I'll get to that later. It's given me a good idea where the wing is gonna go, the wing root rib. I'm not 100% not sure how, anyway, I'll start building the wing soon and it's just gonna be a matter of sneak up on it slowly. The training edge is gonna be out here somewhere away from the um, longeron, but I had a look at the proctor outside actually and it's got the, same as I'm gonna do up there, a bit of flashing, four inch flashing. So this might be a flashing four inches at the trailing edge down to nothing almost at the front. The good thing is I can build that now, I'll build some sort of housing on top of the rib, rib, rib nuts or whatever I'm going to do to put that on um, and then take it off, put it on the wall until after, you know, final, final fit as I say. So from here, I'm going to take a bit of a break as I keep saying. Um, got some domestic duties and Christmas lights to put up but what's next I'll get those brackets made I need to remove those back brackets again um, and you can see I'll show you the end result the end result is going to be something like these guys so I've removed most of the material apart from where the Adele clamp goes and then I've got the 100 mil holes drilled in that side. And then I can probably, probably upsize the bottom to 3 16 and the rear edge to 3 16 I'll leave the front at, at 3 32nd, like pilot holes, I think, until such time as the aluminium sheet goes on the front. And then I can back drill through what would be three layers then that's the plan at this stage. I've got the firewall back off um, for access in here. Also, I'll do some, I'll run the rudder cables. Um, the rudder cables need to stay low and then obviously they'll angle up to the rudder. The tail wheel, I'm not sure, could probably just about straight line that. From here, if you look at us, you can sort of, it tells me where it needs to penetrate through the skin, which is the third bay back. And on this side, <laughs> it looks like that diagonal, that sort of support for the elevator bell crank support rod, is gonna be right in the way of the tail wheel. So nothing that a little fairing won't fix. So that's where I'm at at the moment. A lot of work still to go. Also, we need to um, work out where my aileron's gonna penetrate through this plywood as well. I don't wanna botch that up too big, but you know, say a one inch hole with a grommet would look pretty nice. It'd look like 2024. Um, paint these brackets. Yeah, so pretty happy with how it's turning out at the moment. A lot, a lot more work than I thought. You sort of think you just slap these panels on and move on, but I'm just sort of getting distracted now with the fuselage. I like that sort of work though, it's good. We're working with wood. Um, but it's almost time now to put the ribs on. I'm not sure, probably should get the ribs on and the trailing edge and get the ailerons working. And then the wings are done. Um, so I'm working my way up to that. Someone suggested as well, putting some plywood behind, you know, I had the cheese and lettuce sandwich saga going on. Um, so some plywood potentially, I think it's just because these aren't, these tags aren't welded on too well. So, you know, you've got a gap, I get a ruler. So the firewall goes on to these footings, which are all over the shop, to be honest. 
that one's out, that one's, that one's in. That one's in. That one's way out. They could be anywhere. That one's pretty good. So that one's way out of the top. So we've got one out of four. That's pretty good for this kit. Um, so, yeah, a bit of plywood in there may, you know, a bit of plywood here, but not on there. So scallop the corners out and then put the firewall on. The whole idea of a firewall was to stop the fire, I guess, if there was happened to be one and the heat and oil, etc. Um, so I could put a bit of ply on there. We'll work up to that, see what happens. All right, guys, there you go. Another video, another week's work, if you like. Me uh, coming out here and keep, just got to keep the wheels ticking over. Uh, she's looking really good. If there's anything you want to look at specifically, let me know. Uh, but I think, yeah, it's starting to take shape. Exciting. Still a long way to go. Probably another 12, 18 months. Um, I've got no idea really. I was talking to my offsider before about the covering process. Um, you know, it'd take me a month just to wrap it in Christmas paper, let alone doing it um, for real. So, so I hope you enjoyed the video this week. Just a quick recap. Thanks, Legends. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.